If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Hi, my name is Wang Kang. Uh, I'm a 3D and concept artist working in game industry. Uh, in this video, I'm going to share the breakdown process of how I make the forest girl 3D modeling based on a concept. I'm going to talk about the reference board, the high poly, the texture, and the rendering. I hope you will learn something from it. So let's get it started. Before I start to sculpt, uh, I would prepare a reference board, which will help me to build everything up. Uh, normally it has a few enemy reference, some color reference, some style reference, and some guide images for specific details like crack or barks. I like to keep this reference board clean and organized. I know all of us must have a bunch of amazing images, like me, and want to put them all on the reference board. But trust me, too much reference images will be the noise when you need to focus more on your own works. So I would suggest having around 10 to 15 images that will be good enough. You can see I also have some realistic hair reference that because I want to do some recreation based on the concept art for the character face and hair. Uh, I would not 100% trans the concept art to the 3D. So I prepared them. Uh, you may not need them if you want to just match the concept style. After set the reference board up, I'm ready to start to do sculpting. The high poly is really important for a stylized character. It decides at least 50% that how your final model looks in the rendering scene. So I always spend a lot of time on sculpting. There are four things that I will mainly focus on when I'm sculpting. The shape, the details, the smoothness, and the proportion. Let me show you guys a video demo about the sculpting and explain why they are important. The shape is the silhouette or outline of the model. It will affect the first impression of a character. It will also help to create the dynamic or the sculpting. But in this case, I already have a beautiful concept, so I don't need to consider too much about it. And for the details, I think there are two different types. First is the shape details, which will be created over sculpting. Second is the texture details, which is added through texture maps, like some noise and dirt. A solid texture normally will not have super dirt or complicated texture map. So I will finish most of details during high poly, which are shape details. And I should also avoid to sculpt too many small details on the high poly, since they are also the noise. So let's do more big details on the hair mass. Smoothness is also important since a stylized character will have a lot of big shapes without that much details on top. If you didn't make everything smooth enough, the high poly would look bumpy and unfinished. What I would do is to not raise in the subdivision level until all shapes are good and smooth. I like to use flatten and polish brush to adjust those bumpy areas and switch subdivision between low and high to do adjustments. A proportion will decide the solid level or the cartoony level of your character. You have to keep in mind what type of stylized character you want to make. The Overwatch character and Clash of Clans characters are all stylized, but they look totally different on visual. And that all decided by the proportions. And also proportion is a fundamental of the character, so I will always make sure that my character have a solid and a correct proportion on every single step. The other thing I would like to talk about is the hair. For my case, I will make fiber hair in Blender, so I did not spend time on making hair mesh strips. But if you would like to use the hair mesh in final render, you have to make the hair much better look than mine. When I feel the high poly is getting close to finish, I would do poly painting. Sometimes it will help me to do the final check for the sculpting, like finding bumpy area and checking the proportion. 
and meanwhile, I could somehow prevail how the character looks after texture. I recommend you guys to do this also. So the high poly looks good. Let's move to the texture. For the stylized texture, I need to balance the clean and noise. The cartoony character will not have too much texture information, but if you just use the bright color, that would be a little boring. So I have to add some kind of noise, but avoid add too much to break the stylized feel. In this case, I use Substance Painter to texture my character. I didn't import the hair mask, since like I said before, I want to do fiber hairs in Blender, but if I want to make a game ready hairs, I will import the hair mask as well. You can see I assign different shaders to different masks, so I could have some of them when I'm texture some areas underneath, but there are a bunch of huge shadow on multiple parts, and some of them are garbage, like I don't want to see uh, when the character raises her arm, there is a ugly cave AO shadow on her skin, even though it looks just fine on the A-pose. So the first thing I should do is adjusting the AO map. It is hard to have a perfect AO map through baking, whatever using marmoset or substance. What I'm doing is to remove the AO map from texture setting panel, since I can't add in the bake maps. And then I insert it to the layer panel and I could just block all AO by black mask and manually reveal which parts I want the AO show up. And I could adjust the black mask through brush. So now there is no cast shadow on her arm anymore, and other parts still have the AO. Through this way, I could even change the AO's color and tone. After this, uh, I will add in gradient color to the map. If the model just had the flat color, that would be a little boring, and gradient color will make the flat color more interesting. For skin parts, I only add two gradient color layers, but in some case, I probably add more to make sure the base color map is interesting enough. And for some parts like arms that have some angle, uh, I will need to adjust the gradient angles as well. You can see the color change on my character skin. And then I will start to painting the values on the model, like doing makeup. Uh, what I'm doing is to enhance the structure of the character. It is a little like painting the texture for the diffuse map only models. But no need to do very detailed since more of forms and details are already there. I just make them more clear and stand out. Even though under PBR render, the base color map will not affect texture performance that much. It is still help to improve the quality of the whole texture. So I always spend some time on it, and I think that is worth it.
so I'm satisfied with the value of the face. Let's talk about curvature. Curvature is like the highlight for the texture, and you could find them on most of the case. Curvature could help to make the stylized shape stand out more, and also create variation. But I would not add too much curvature, since if it is everywhere, they would not able to enhance the important parts on the character. So I will manually adjust the curvature through black mask. Remove the curvature color on the wrong place, and I also give them some variety. When I finish these four steps, I just need to add some materials, and the character texture will look pretty good and ready for rendering. So I'm gonna export all maps to the Blender. In Blender, I will add the fiber hairs, rigging and posing the character, and then create the lighting room for her. I did the hair through the particle system of Blender. You could also do this through Maya and Action, but I think Blender is faster and user-friendly. What I have to do is just assign different weight groups on the surface, and then generate the hair particles based on the groups, and that will help me to split hairs to different strips, and easy to add in the shape. I could move those hair particle guidelines to get the hair shape I want through particle mode. You could switch between different modes on the left top corner. Even though I want to do kind of realistic hair, but I still want to keep the cartoony feel. So I try to make the hair shape bulky just like the original concept. This, pro uh, this process will take a while since I need to adjust these particle guidelines step by step to create the similar shapes as the concept. I will not talk more details about this workflow, since there are a lot of free tutorials on YouTube. As you see, the character is a bold. That's because I limit the hair showing up in render wheel. My, my PC is not that good, and it would be super laggy if I render too much hair on the viewpoint. But when I do final rendering, all hairs will show up. Let's do a rendering test. I use Cycles to do the rendering. Uh, it is pretty close to Arnold, uh, but I feel it's faster and more stylus friendly than Arnold. Eevee will more like a real-time render, which is not a good choice for this case, since the hair material will not display well in Eevee. You can see there are just some flat black color. I also wrecked my character in Blender. I would say it is not that difficult. I just follow the tutorials on the YouTube and make a pretty basic rigging to help me to pause in my character. You could try to do this in ZBrush or Maya. Since I'm not that good at rigging, I do not think I could give any good tips. But I would suggest give a shot to Blender rigging system. It's pretty fast and easy to use. Just like Maya, I could painting joint weight on the skin, and that will help me to make the bending area more natural. Finally, I move to the last step, which is doing lighting and rendering. I use cycles to do final image rendering, 
you can see I have a bunch of lights, including a background map. Those green lights are mesh lights, which created by emission color. Usually I will have at least three basic lights, a main light, a rim light, and a fill-in light, but case by case, for some models, I will have way more than three, like this one, but most of character scene will just need these three lights to create a good lighting room. Since I will do some adjustments in Photoshop, I will also rendering a ID map image out and that will help me to use lasso tool. You could assign the ID shaders to all meshes and bring them through cycles. So here is the final image. Uh, I hope you like it. My videos are pretty much it and I'm happy to share my creating process with you guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to see more of my works, feel free to check my art station by the link down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful and creative day. Thanks.